What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode, I'm gonna be diving into the basics of using a baseline grid inside of your UI and web design projects. At its core, a baseline grid is an underlying structure made up of invisible units of measurement that allow you to line things up on your page, give consistent spacing, and just in general, make things look much more professional. If you've heard terms like typographic scale or vertical rhythm, then a baseline grid is gonna help you accomplish all of those things. So today, we're gonna take a look at some typography, how to give consistent spacing, how to build your own baseline grid, how to stick to it and when to break it because there's a time to break the rules. Let me tell you what. Okay, so we have Adobe XD open. You feel free to use whichever design program you feel most comfortable with. It's gonna be the same in most of them. I would recommend Figma or XD because I like the way that they do grids, layouts, and columns a little bit more, just personal preference. But I have XD open and I have a standard kind of web design artboard on my canvas. It's a 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna select the name of the actual artboard itself and head over to my properties panel and I'm gonna go down to this grid section right here. I'm gonna go ahead and tap that and it's gonna turn on my vertical columns, okay? My grids or my 12 column layout. So I don't want layouts, I actually want square grids. So I'm gonna just drop down right here and hit square and you'll see we get these squares. I have my squares set up to be blue and my columns and layouts and stuff to be blue. I like that a little bit better. Um, also, if you'll notice, it is set as an eight point grid or an eight pixel square size grid. Uh, I can make that the default just by pressing right there and it'll always be that case from now on. Now that I have my eight point grid established, I'm gonna insert some typography and start building out my typographic scale and then establishing vertical rhythm using this baseline grid. You're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about in a second. First thing I'm gonna do is drop some type on the screen. I'm just gonna paste some lorem ipsum that I got from somewhere else and expand this box out a little bit. I can turn my grid on and off in an XD by just holding command or control and hitting the uh, actual apostrophe key. So I'll be doing that a lot during this tutorial because it's just really quick on and off to see if I'm lining everything up. I'm gonna choose something a little bit nicer than Helvetica, something like Poppins. I'm gonna drop it down to eight. I'm gonna fill it with an off black and then let's zoom in and let's just see it real quick, okay? So let's just use the zoom tool, zoom in, turn on our grid, and this is not what we wanted, right? As I try to line everything up, it's not really making any sense yet. Now comes our first point. Why is it called a baseline grid? Because the actual baseline of my typography should land on the grid. See how it was off there right here? Now I just bump it up and now it is on the grid, okay? We're established on the grid, but each of the baselines should also line up on a piece of the grid. This is really small text. Uh, eight's a little bit small for web for web design or you know font uses in digital stuff. So we probably wanna bump this up to 16, not 18, but 16 because that's divisible by eight. Now we bump the baseline there and now what we're gonna do is play with the line height and make sure that it lines up as well. So you have a 16 pixel font and you have 24 pixels of line height, which is also divisible by eight. So now you can see uh, if we make sure everything's lined up, as we're going down, we get consistent spacing and everything is landing on the grid as it should. This makes sense. If you want more line height, you can do that. Just make sure that it's divisible by eight. So we wanna come up by 10, drop down by two, and now you are on an appropriate grid line or baseline there. So I like that a little bit more. I feel like it gives it a little bit more breathing room, okay? So let's back out a little bit. We've now established our body copy and now we wanna establish our kind of typographic scale. Well, I, I've done this so many times in my videos, but this is the easy way to do it. I'm just gonna grab my text up here. Let's change this to be something like sub headline here, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna take our size and let's just times it by two. That should still be divisible by eight, right? You can, if you wanna check your math work, you can drop over here and do 32 divided by eight and we should get a nice whole number of four, which we absolutely do. So let's go back, put it to 32. We wanna add some contrast. Let's do that with not only size, but with weight. So we're gonna head up from regular to medium to semi bold, okay? I'm gonna make sure that my text is actually not area text, but point text. I'm gonna bring it down and I'm going to line it up on an appropriate grid line above my body copy, okay? 
So now I'm lined up right here. My baseline is on the grid. We know that because the baseline of some of the character, majority of the characters is there on the grid. Now comes time for you to make a design decision. Does this subheadline sit a little too close to the body copy? They're both on the baseline grid, which was great, but is it too close? If it is, you're just gonna move it up and line it up on the next section of the baseline grid, just like that. And now maybe that looks a little bit better to you. We can move that over here to the side. We can also continue to build out our typographic scale by jumping our subheadline up and creating a massive headline. Massive headlines work two, something like that. Now we're gonna take our typography or we're gonna times it by maybe three. Let's make it really, really big. And then we'll move it all the way over to bold. Got that? Now that we've moved it over to bold, we wanna make sure that our line height also works as well. So let's go 32 times three, and now we get a line height that works. We're keeping everything divisible by eight, why? So that we can come in even to our massive headline, make sure that it's lined up on the baseline grid, and then each subsequent line also lines up on the baseline grid. Everything right now is currently lined up on the baseline grid. Now this may not look like some awesome thing to you, but the alternative is for you to create a piece of work and we're just kind of like lining things up how they look however we think they're gonna look good and they're just they, there's just it's messy there's not a lot of rhyme or reason here and as you scale this developers are gonna wonder what the consistent spacing is users are gonna subconsciously not enjoy this they're gonna enjoy this one a lot more what's really great about this is if we start to scale our design and here's the simplest form of scaling our design let's say we're doing blog post down below, we can grab our sub headline and our body copy. We can group them together. And in Adobe XD, you can press Command R to repeat grid. We can turn on our baseline grid, start repeating grid like this, and make sure that everything is lining up on the baseline grid, which it absolutely is. Maybe we want some more space in between of our articles that are here. All we have to do is grab this and move it out and line it up on whatever baseline grid works good for us. And now we've created consistent spacing in our project. And this design may not look very much. It's just black text and white background, but it has some rhyme or reason. Maybe my headline is actually a little bit too close. I'm gonna move it up, but I wanna move it up to the right spot. So I'm going to make sure that it's on my baseline grid, something like that. I think the whole thing maybe needs to come down. And so I'm gonna make sure that I have my baseline grid on. I'm gonna move it down a little bit and everything lines up on the baseline grid. Again, I'm gonna add one design element to give this design maybe a little bit of interest. Now I'm just gonna have fun and play with some elements over on the right hand side. And the reason that I don't care if those are lined up on the grid is because everything else is lined up on the grid. I've created rhyme or reason in my design. Now I'm, I have the luxury to break the design or break those rules where I see fit. It adds some interest and some dimension to your design. Everything over here makes sense, so therefore this is understandable. So first things first, set up your baseline grid and make sure that everything aligns to that baseline grid. Second thing, as you're building your typographic scale, make sure that everything is divisible by your baseline grid foundation number. Number three, start making design decisions and actually creating structure and rhythm how you, the designer, think it looks best while still adhering to the rules of the grid. And lastly, but not least, know when to break the grid, have fun, be creative. Because you've created all this structure over here, you can have some fun maybe in another place. Well, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and deep dives into topics like this one. So hopefully you'll stick around. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and check the description for helpful links that'll give you more insight and information into baseline grids, typographic scale, and all that cool designy stuff. I hope you guys are having an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and lining things up just right. I'll see you in the next one.